Briefly, today we'll be looking at understanding the workings of His grace. Understanding how grace works. How does grace work? We'll take our test and verse 9 to 10. Hebrews 2 and verse 9 to 10. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom and are all things, and by whom are all things. We see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. And the first thing we're going to learn today is that to make sure the grace of God is at work in our life every day, we must learn to see Jesus. We must learn to see Jesus in every bit of our day, in every second, every minute, every hour of the day. We must see Jesus in various aspects. These aspects we're going to look at today. For example, we must see Jesus that Jesus took responsibility for his life. Jesus took responsibility for his life. And so we must learn to take responsibility for our lives. We must learn to take responsibilities for our lives. So Jesus took responsibility for his life. We must take 100% responsibility for the quality of life that we live. Grace without works is dead. Therefore, the works that will provoke the grace of God in our life, number one, is responsibility taking. Jesus, for example, Jesus, Bible tells us, in Hebrews 4 and verse 15, Jesus was tempted at all points. At all points, he was tempted, but he didn't succumb. He didn't yield to temptation. He didn't fail. He was tempted at all points, Hebrews 4, 15. But yet, he did not give up to temptation. What was that? It means he took responsibilities for his actions. So we see Jesus taking responsibility for his actions during the day and during the night. How does grace work? Grace works when we take responsibility for all our actions. Jesus relied on the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14 and verse 10, it says, Believers thou know that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Jesus understands the place of the Holy Spirit in his everyday life. He says, the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. The Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, he does the works. He does the miracles. He does the wonders in our days. Jesus worked. The kind of work that he did, he worked from the position of rest. Jesus was never lazy. Jesus was enthusiastic. Jesus planned his day. Jesus prayed. Jesus healed. Jesus died. That we might be saved. Jesus took responsibility for everything that he did. He relied on the Holy Spirit. He wasn't lazy. He approached the day with keenness of purpose. 
He approached his days with purposefulness. In the morning, he will rise up a great while before day and begins to plan his day. He meditates. He prays. He goes on into the other works of the day. We must see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things. Number one, we must take responsibility for our day. Hallelujah. We must refuse to blame anyone Blame any economy, blame any government for our present situation. We must quit the blame attitude. Learning from Jesus. Jesus never blamed any circumstance or any situation. Rather, he transformed the situations. When there was no wine in the marriage of the Canaan of Galilee, he made wine available from water. He never complained. He took responsibility. We must live as Jesus lived on earth. Every day, taking steps, not being afraid, but full of hope and faith. We must learn to take risks we must stop complaining. Jesus took risk all the time. I must tell you, faith is risk. <laughs> faith is risk. Hallelujah. You just believe that the impossible is possible. And that's it. And what looks impossible is possible. As I say, faith is risk. We must learn to take risk. We must walk by faith always and never by sight. Anything you complain about, you can adjust or do something about it. You can get a better job. You can go back to school and learn and learn new skills. You can do anything. The Apostle Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You can make the change that is needed. Take responsibility for your life today. Do not frustrate the grace of God, but rather take advantage of the products of the finished works of Jesus Christ. The products of the finished work of Jesus Christ must be seen in our daily life. We must live as those who are beneficiaries from the finished works of Jesus. What are the products of the finished work of Jesus? And he came and took the book out of the hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four bills and four and twenty others fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are prayers of the saint. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by the blood of and of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Verse 10. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders. And the number of them was ten thousands times ten thousands and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive for us 
These are the products of the finished life, the, of the finished work of Jesus Christ, that we should work in this product in our present life. Saying with a loud voice, was it is a lamb that was slain to receive for us power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for the believers power. You know, one day he said, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. So, you, when you accept responsibility for your life, you walk in power. You walk in the finished works of the cross. You walk in divine riches. You walk in divine wisdom. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 12. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us power, riches, wisdom, strength. Your strength will not fail in the name of Jesus. Honor, glory, and blessing. All these Christ has received for us. So we should not frustrate the grace of God that he has given to us. This is the working of grace when we assume the responsibility and we take responsibility for all our actions. We begin to see the grace of God unfolding in our life. If we can believe that Jesus Christ has purchased for us, he has bought for us, he has given us power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing, then we walk in the consciousness of all this. So, we should not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. So, we should not frustrate the grace of God in our lives. The New Living Translation says, I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. We should assume responsibility for our lives. They will begin to shine forth. We should never treat the grace of God as meaningless. Galatians chapter 2, verse 21, the New Living Translation. We should never treat the grace of God as meaningless in our lives. But we see Jesus. What do we see in Jesus all day in all of our life? What do we see in Jesus? Number one, he was responsible for all his actions, for his life. Number two, Jesus was focused. Jesus was focused. Jesus was focused. And his grace has made us focused and the grace of our lord jesus christ can make you also to live a focused life what did jesus focus on jesus focused on his purpose so you can focus on your purpose jesus focused on his purpose and the reward at the end jesus focused on his purpose and the reward at the end, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the enemy, for God was with him. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Jesus focused on his purpose, going about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. What should you do? You should live a focused life, a purpose-filled life, a life that is filled with purpose. You must dare to live a life that's filled with purpose. Hallelujah. Jesus lived a life that's filled with purpose. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed 
of the devil, for God was with him, confirming his words with power, with signs, and with wonders. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 14 and verse 21, the Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him. The Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him. What is written of you? What is your purpose on earth? But we see Jesus. You must see Jesus every day. In this aspect, he focus on his purpose on earth. You must learn to focus on your purpose. You must learn to focus on your purpose. And he answered and said unto them, it is one of the twelve that dipped with me in the dish. Mark 14, verse 20, verse 21. The Son of Man indeed goeth, as is written of him. He knew his purpose. You must know your purpose and you must focus on your purpose. Focus on your purpose in life. What's your purpose? And what does it mean to focus on your purpose? You must have a definite objective. You must have a definite goal. You, you have something you are passionate about. Something you must do. That is your purpose. That is your purpose. You must define this goal. You must define it. Give it a definition. Give it a definition. It says, write the vision and make it plain. The vision is your definite goal, your definite objective, and make it plain, define it, that he might run that read it. So, you must run with it. You must run with it. You must run with your, with your, with your purpose, focusing on it. In Luke 2 and verse 49, he refused to go with the crowd. He refused to belong to the crowd. He knew what he was to do, even as a child. He said, Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Don't you think I must be about my purpose? Don't you think I have to separate myself from the multitude and from the crowd? And um, from the assumptions of the generality of people, we must live a focused life. Seeing Jesus every day, we must differentiate ourselves and distinguish ourselves in every event of life. We must choose, even when we are in the crowd, we must choose to be separate from the crowd. Everyone you are among the crowd, you must choose to be separate from the crowd. Hallelujah. The grace of God will project you in the name of Jesus and sanctify you for honor and glory in Jesus' precious name. So number one thing we must do every day to allow the grace of God to work in our lives to see that the grace of God is, is working in our life. Number one is to, assess, is to accept responsibility. Number two is to live a focused life. What do we focus on? We focus on our purpose on earth. We focus on the purpose of, on our purpose on earth by writing out our vision, defining our objective, making it plain. Then we begin to run with it. You run with it throughout your day. Throughout your week, throughout your month, never losing hope, never losing focus. Number three, Jesus understands the workings of visualization and declarations. Jesus understands the workings of visualization and declaration. Years before Jesus Christ was crucified and resurrected from the grave, he saw it. He spoke about it. He said it over and over. He continued to declare it. Hallelujah. We hear him say something like this. I will destroy this temple. 
that is made with hands. And within three days, I will build it again. <laughs> he said, I will build another made without hands. This is Jesus. You can read that in Mark chapter 14 and verse 58. I will destroy this temple that is made with, with hands. And within three days, I will build another made without hands. Hallelujah. Jesus engaged the force of visualization, the force of declaration. As he visualized, he declared it. As he saw, as the Father had told him, as the Spirit of God has told him, he declared it. Anything about your purpose, we take visualization. What is visualization? You see what should happen in the nearest future as though it is happening now. That's visualization. Jesus spoke boldly about his purpose on earth and the things that have been revealed to his subconscious mind. He spoke boldly about his purpose on earth and about the things that have been revealed to him in his subconscious mind. Though they were not manifested yet, he saw them. He knew these things. There are some things that you know. You know and you know and you know. This is your purpose on earth. That is why God has created you. It is why you are living the way you are today. You must see. You must see these things. There are some things that you know that nobody else knows. There are some things that God has revealed to you that no other person knows. You must see this thing and declare it. As much as you're walking towards it, you are declaring it. You walk towards it, you declare it. The more you say it, the more it comes alive. The more you say it, the more it comes alive. Hallelujah. So we should learn the force of declaration. He said, as surely as I hear you say in my ears, that is what I will do unto you. As surely as I hear you say, whatever I hear you say in my ear, as surely as I live, that is what I'm going to do unto you. Hallelujah. So the more you say the words, he said, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. So you stack your class full of rain. You stack your class, do what? Full of rain. Hallelujah. For example, Jesus in Luke 22 is our perfect example. In Luke 22 and verse 69, Jesus said, Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Did you hear that? Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. Of God. Nobody spoke like Jesus. At this point, he hadn't ascended. He was just brought before the council. He wasn't crucified even. But he's declaring it. As the Father has shown him, he said, Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God. It took some days after then, after he resurrected and ascended and sat at the right hand of power of God. So there is force in what we say. You must learn to declare your purpose. You must learn to declare your purpose. Nobody will declare your purpose for you. The more you see it, the more you declare it. The more you see it. we we'll take one more example from Jesus' life. Mark chapter 14. Let's read from verse 21. Read earlier. The Son of Man indeed goeth as is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had not been born. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. So, 
we live to see what we declare. Whatever negative negativity that is appearing to you in your life, you, 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 you discard it by the word of God. You condemn it. You condemn it by the word. It says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. So, you decree it. You make declarations. Engage your force of declaration. That is another way you can see the grace of work, the grace of God at work in your life. We can see the grace of God manifesting in our lives when we begin to declare the word of grace. When we declare the word of His grace, they begin to show forth in our lives. Manifestations begin to show forth. Days after, weeks after, months after. See what Jesus said. Luke chapter 4 and verse 18. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This is Jesus speaking, declaring. See, at this point, it was just beginning the ministry that God has called him into. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Nobody speaks like Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Days after then, He began to preach the gospel to the poor. Days after then, he began to heal the brokenhearted. Days after this declaration, he began to preach deliverance to the captives. He began to deliver those that were in captivity. Days after this declaration. So, the more you declare the word of God, the more the energy comes to play in your life. Hallelujah. Did he set at liberty those that were bruised? Yes. He set at liberty those that were bruised. You also must learn to declare, saying without fear, the purpose of God for you on this earth. You must learn to declare, you must learn to speak without fear, the purpose of God for you on earth. The more you speak it, the more it comes alive. The more you speak it, the more it comes alive. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The more you visualize your purpose and declare posi possibilities, the faster you enter into your God-ordained rest. I say it again. The more you visualize your purpose and declare possibilities, the faster you enter into your God-ordained rest. Hallelujah. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensure it. First Peter chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. So, you control your tongue from speaking negativity. Refrain your tongue from speaking negativity. And change your language to positivity. Let your language plant that destiny that God has created for you. Let that your language change today and build up your destiny like an edifice. Make declarations today. Pray in the Holy Ghost. You are a purpose-filled entity. You are not a non-entity. You have been made great. You are increasing on every side. In the name of Jesus Christ. But we see Jesus. We must learn to see Jesus by taking responsibility for our day. By living a focused life every day. By engaging the force of visualization and the force of declaration. As you do this, you see 
that the grace of God will come to work in your life. And before long, the grace of God will overshadow you. The manifestations of the mighty God of Israel will be visible in your life. You are a miracle in the name of Jesus. God bless you in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.